Now, inflation actually means there is increase in the prices of the commodities in the economy. So let's take a very simple example of tomatoes. If I'm able to buy five tomatoes for $5 routinely during the inflation, what would happen? I will be able to get five tomatoes for $6. So there are two ways under which I can proceed. Either I'll have to spend one extra dollar to get those tomatoes or I would cut down my consumption of tomatoes. The next important thing here is whenever there is a situation of inflation that occurs, there is an impact onto the savings. Since I am spending more in order to consume the same amount of tomatoes, I am cutting down on my savings. So the savings start to decrease. Now this would impact the investments and the aggregate demand into the economy. So there could be two ways under which we can proceed with the inflation. It could be either a demand pull inflation or a cost push. So let's understand the demand pull inflation. Demand pull inflation means there is a sudden increase in the demand. During the Christmas festive season, there has been a sudden increase in the demand for Christmas trees. But the supply was not that much. So the supply ran short of the demand that is there. As a result, the prices shoot up. And that is what is a demand pull inflation. Let's take another example. Here we have a cost push inflation. Cost push inflation actually means that there is an increase in the rate of raw material, increase in the rate of the labor that is going in. As a result, my supply is decreasing because the things that I am procuring is getting expensive. So I am supplying less. But on the other hand, the demand remains the same. Now, when the demand remains the same, what would happen? There would be increase in the price and that is inflation. So inflation, as we said, could be explained as either demand pull inflation or cost push inflation.